Good morning and welcome to this virtual bridge session and we're pleased to have with us Amy Wilson from North East Scotland College. Um, and digital storytelling has been something dear to my heart for quite a while. Um, but of course, there's the question as to what format and one of the most accessible formats um, is podcasting. And um, we're going to hear an instance of how that's been well used from Amy. So over to you, Amy. Hi guys, um, thanks for having me again. Um, so I will do a quick presentation on the Educator's Guide to Podcasting. Um, so the Educator's Guide to Podcasting. So before we get started, we'll just do a little bit about uh, me. Just a, a little slight humble brag. Um, so I am a digital learning advisor at Nesco, but I also teach some uh, evening classes. And one of the evening classes I teach is the Beginner's Guide to Podcasting. And this comes from my previous studies and my previous interests. So I studied the HNC Creative Industries radio course at Nesco when that ran. And then I went on to study uh, my degree in media at RGU. And before all this, I actually volunteered for hospital radio in high school. And then when I went to RGU and I was studying there, I actually edited the RGU radio pre-recorded shows. And eventually we then moved on to podcasting. And I was the um, producer and editor for a couple of the podcasting shows. So that's how I really got into to podcasting. Um, so we're going to look at what is podcasting um, and for many of you you've probably listened to some podcasts or you'll listen to talk radio which is a very similar kind of concept and it is just audio broadcasting of content and stories um, these can be downloaded or they can even be streamed they're very portable but what we like about them is that they're extremely personable. It feels almost like you're having a conversation with friends or with that one person, or you're getting a story directly told to you in a very personable way. So benefits for students, the flexibility. Um, they can be listened to anytime, anywhere, and on pretty much any smart device. Uh, if they have a smartwatch, they can even download podcasts to smartwatches now. Um, so they're extremely flexible in that sense. Uh, podcasts could cover material from missed classes. So you could record material and have them available anytime for the students to be able to catch up if they miss a class. Podcasts are consistent. Um, once you've recorded something, it stays the same. Uh, so it means that you're always going to have a consistent approach to the student experience, to the content you're telling them and to how the lesson is planned. And they're also extremely accessible. Um, so there is a lot of benefits for people who have mental and visual impairments. Uh, it's really easy for people to pick up and listen to, uh, and they can, they can use any device that's uh, easiest for them as well. So they don't have to learn a new software in many cases. So it's really easy for students in that sense. There are further benefits to students as well. Um, it's actually easier to listen to for a long time um, sitting down in a lecture hall can actually be quite challenging for a lot of people, um, especially myself. Having to sit for an hour can sometimes be quite difficult to do. Uh, I don't find it the easiest to do. However, I can listen to an hour of podcasts and it's because I can do other things. I can go and walk my dog. I can do the dishes. Um, you know, I can even do some of the cleaning around the house while I'm listening. So it's actually easier for students to listen for a long time than it is to sit down and, and watch a, a lecture. Um, it can create communities. Uh, so a lot of people, fans, will kind of band together and create a community. You'll follow them on social media. Um, they'll have a little forum somewhere. It will create a pocket of, oh, did you listen to this one? Did it, Oh, yeah, I really liked that episode or that was really interesting uh, in there. And lastly, they can actually be used for revision as well. Um, so you can have podcasts available to students and they can go back and listen to these as many times as they want as part of their revision. So podcasting is powerful storytelling and I'm really glad that we, we said storytelling at the, at the start there because that really is what it is. Um, Although you're, you're, you'll consider yourself as a lecturer or a teacher, you are also telling stories while you are teaching. You're creating a narrative for the beginning, the middle and the end of the lesson, which you're doing with your podcast as well. So audio captures aspects of the story that text can't. 
So reading a Word document doesn't really create emphasis. However, when we speak, we will put emphasis on certain key points. And you'll notice that as you are speaking, you'll stress certain syllables, you'll stress words, and you'll make things more prominent with your speech, which is something that you can also do with podcasting, but it's harder to do with your Word document. You can put things in bold and you can underline things, but it's not quite the same as actually hearing it with someone's voice. Um, stories and podcasts are authentic. Uh, as they are coming out, you make mistakes when we speak, but it has that authenticity that uh, a piece of text that's written doesn't. Uh, it's very robotic reading a piece of text. They'll they'll hear it in their own uh, their mind's voice, um, but it will be very kind of staccato over when the flow of speech from your from your voice, um, similar to when they're in a lecture, but over a podcast uh, is is much better. It can also capture moods as well. So again, that's our stressing. If something's quite serious, we'll tend to say it in a more serious way. If they're sound quite funny, we can be a bit more jovial as we speak. And also with podcasts, we have verbal and non-verbal. Um, so obviously speaking would be verbal. However, there can be non-verbal thing elements, silences, there can be sound effects, music, that kind of stuff in there as well to kind of promote our story of our, our podcast. So some of the key elements of a podcast include these, uh, and it's really easy to kind of get started. One of the, the main key elements, I would say, is actually something so basic, and it's something that we do every day when we create documents, and it's giving things a title. Uh, and with podcasts, it's just giving your story a title, your podcast a title, your episode a title, as well as maybe a, a short description. And there's many reasons for this, and they all kind of flow together why, why you want to do this. Um, it creates momentum. Uh, so similar to if you're teaching, um, let's think of you're teaching biology, you're teaching plant life. You might start with talking about the different parts of a plant, then the cycle of nitrogen, et cetera, et cetera, those kind of things. You'll have a way of teaching this. And you want to do the same thing with podcasts. You want to create that momentum of where you start, where your middle, where your end is, for your, your podcasts. Um, so your story can help with that and descriptions will help as well because it will keep both you and the student on track and you'll understand where you're coming from, where you're going. Um, it can also help introduce educational concepts and guest speakers. So if there's um, you know, the concept of the nitrogen cycle in plants, we, we want that to be introduced. And we're actually gonna have a lecturer from a different college and he's gonna be there and tell us about it. So having that in your description and your story just makes it a little bit easier for um, students to know what's going to happen when they listen to this. It creates a focus as well for your podcast. It means you're less likely to get sidetracked when you're doing it. You're less likely to bring up a, a separate topic. Um, it can happen when you're doing face-to-face -face lectures. A student will ask you a question about something that happened last week or something that they're not clear on, and you can get a little bit sidetracked and then it detracts from the lesson. With a podcast, having your story title and your description set keeps the focus on the, the lesson and, and stops you kind of swaying from, from one topic to another. Um, it makes it clear to your listeners. It just means that they know exactly what's going to happen so they can decide, okay, I actually know enough about the nitrogen cycle. I don't need this, this lesson. Um, but maybe I need the next lesson, uh, the next podcast, or maybe I've already listened to that one. It just makes it clear which is which, um, rather than just calling everything podcast one, podcast two. Uh, so that's that's something that's key there. And lastly, defines their expectations. If they're coming to it brand new and fresh, um, by knowing what the title is and a little bit of the description, just makes it a little bit easier for them to know this is something I'm interested in, I will go and give this a listen. So these are really basic key concepts that you need to kind of get started with your, your podcast, knowing your story title and the description that you will have in there. Once you're kind of have this in paper or in your, in your mind, however you like to plan things, you're gonna probably focus on what format are we going for? Um, and by format, I mean, how are we going to produce our podcast? How is it going to run? And there's a couple of different formats that you can use. Um, the common ones are, are here. We have GabFest, also known as a Chumcast. Um, so this is usually 
a group of people that know each other quite well chatting about a topic. And you'll hear this in many different types of podcasts um, as, as you, if you listen to them, you'll hear there'll be maybe three or four presenters and they're quite friendly. They have little jokes uh, every now and again. So this could be you and a group of students. It could be you and a, a group of lecturers. However you wish to do it, you could have this kind of format. Uh, another format is usually with one or two hosts uh, and it's the interview style. And this can just then include uh, bringing on guests. So you could have um, guest speakers, guest lecturers. You could even do it with students. Um, one of the examples that we will soon have for, for this kind of um, format of podcast is the Nesco uh, Wellbeing and Mental Health podcast. Um, which is going to be done by the um, Student Advice and Help Centre. They are actually coming up with a, a series of podcast episodes and they're going to be asking students and staff to get involved and to be um, guest speakers to talk about certain things. So it will cover things like well-being, mental health, respect, and it will be, be available to staff and students. So that's something that we will have and it will be that kind of interview style. There'll be one host who will bring on a guest speaker each time and they'll talk about the uh, topic. And lastly, we have our, our kind of final uh, format, which is a storytelling. And this is usually just one person telling a, a story, telling a lesson, describing a, a topic um, in, a, in a kind of a nice in-depth way. So these are the formats that you might want to go for. Um, you can also, one of the things I like is seeing staff, they, they do a lot of stuff like group presentations. And I'd really like to see staff do group presentations in a podcast format so they could have their students using the GabFest Chumcast format or even an interview um, style to actually create their, their presentations rather than doing the kind of stand up uh, in front of a room with a, a PowerPoint. This could be a really good way to change it up and, and give students a different option. Because I know for a lot of students, they will panic about standing in front of people um, but a podcast can do something quite powerful um, without having to, to have that element of standing in front of a room. Um, so podcasts, really important, compelling stories. And there's different components. The main one really is your beginning, middle and end. So it's the same as any lesson that you do. You need to have a start, a middle and a finish for your lesson. But there are other components that you can use for podcasting. Um, to help create a compelling story. And this could be music. So you could use uh, royalty free or Creative Commons music. Uh, your host, is it going to be you or are you actually gonna get one of your students or a different staff member to do some hosting for you? Um, voice, that's just simply, uh, you know, are, are you gonna get people with accents? Or are you gonna, you know, have your own voice? Are you gonna, you know, you can kind of change your voice up. One of the, the key things you can actually do if you want to do any podcasting, and you're, you're not too sure and you're a bit nervous, is actually smile when you speak. Because if you smile when you speak, you sound a bit happier, you sound a bit more confident. And that's one of the main things that can really kind of make or break a podcast. Um, other things you can do though, you've got things like sound effects, um, silence and your timings. So silence is just being able to pause let moments sink in, uh, allow students to have a time to listen, pause, take in the information and then move on to the next point. Similar to what you would do when you take breaks during uh, your, your lessons, you would be able to do that. Uh, and timings, how long do you want your podcast to be? Um, you could do hour long podcasts. It's not uncommon for students uh, to listen to hour long podcasts. They prefer it over an hour long video because a podcast is one of those things where they can go off and do other things while they are listening. It's, it's because it is so portable, headphones in, you know, phone in pocket, walk around the room, do whatever they want. They can even do it at the gym, that kind of stuff. So you can do, I would say for a good podcast, anywhere between 15 minutes up to an hour is a really good kind of length. There are podcasts out there that are three hours long. That's, you know, it, and it works for them, but it might not work for you. And it's also just almost a bit of a hassle to have a three hour long uh, podcast to, to upload somewhere. And lastly, a script. Um, so you don't need to script every single word you're going to write, but just simply have a, some key points that you want to cover. 
similar to how you would do your lessons, make sure that you cover those key points just so it's uh, clear that you've got everything you needed to say into your podcast. Um, so podcasts are very relatable, um, but you can also use them to create a better relationship with your audience. Uh, and to do that, one of the key things is finding commonality. So it's just simple things while you're speaking to people to say like, oh, you know, well, you're speaking to your audience. Um, due to being a parent, oh, I visited Spain, um, my hobbies are, I've got a dog, um, this kind of stuff. You want to just drop these little tidbits in. Uh, and it's similar if you had students in front of you, they would know little bits about you. You're not telling them your full life story, but they would know, oh, that you like cats or that you, you've you know, been rock climbing before. You want to do the similar thing with your podcast and obviously don't manufacture it. So it's very um, kind of obvious that you've shoehorned something in. But you do want to add just little bits here and then because it will actually make you the podcast more personable because it is a very um, digital format. You do want it to feel like someone's in the room with you and you're talking to them, not that you're talking at them. So just little things like that. Uh, and you'll probably be doing it anyway and not realizing that you're doing it. It's a very common thing to um, introduce yourself and talk about a little bit about yourself at the start of a podcast. Let people know how your weekend was. And if you if you start listening to podcasts, you'll hear them say, oh, well, I was having trouble with my car. And you'll think to yourself, oh, I had trouble with my car two years ago. And that already makes you like this person and that podcast a little bit more. It's a weird um, psych psychological trick that, that works very well. So you can do similar things in your podcast too. As we're kind of looking at the, the basis, our formats, um, you know, the components of our podcast, we're also going to have to look at some of the tools that we actually need. Uh, and you can really get started with almost next to nothing. Uh, and one of the things that you can get started with is simply just a smartphone in many cases. But here, I would say, are the, the minimum things that you require. Um, so something like a portable recording device or smartphone. This could be your main device for recording. So if you have a, a pretty decent smartphone, a, a latest iPhone, Samsung, Sony, something like that, you will get a really good recording from this um, in, in, a, in a way that you don't really need to have any expensive software because um, the recording on your phone is pretty good. Um, but it's also really good just for taking notes when you're out and about, record some notes um, to, to write down, oh, I must mention this in the podcast. So it's really good for that. The next thing you need is some good headphones. So this is for when you're listening back. You want to have some decent quality headphones so you can check that the audio is OK uh, and, and make sure that, you know, you can hear it really well without having to turn it up too loud if you're speaking too quietly or anything like that. Um, next laptop or tablet it's not necessarily required because in many cases with a lot of the apps that are available now you could just do everything on your smartphone however there is some software if you wanted to get quite technical or if you just really like playing around with things you can also use a, a laptop or a tablet as well um, an external microphone comes in really handy for recording uh, and this could just be a simple USB one. I have a USB one that cost me, I think, around about £15. And it's just as good as uh, some of the more expensive, you know, £80 to £90. Um, so you could buy a microphone if you needed to. Or if you've got some good headphones that have a microphone inbuilt in them, then that's a, that's a, a good plus. And lastly, a studio. And by that, I just really mean a quiet room that doesn't have too much background noise. Um, so if you've got a room that's, facing a really busy main road and you can hear that, you don't wanna be in that room, you want to be in a different room, nice and quiet, calm, uh, and doesn't have too much kind of echoey sounds in it. And these are, these are the basics of equipment. You could get really fancy and have, you know, the most expensive headsets and, and microphones, um, but just, you know, simple things like your, your phone, some headphones, a quiet room would be enough to get you started with podcasting. Um, so we know what our tools are. Let's look at our digital tools. Um, so some of the, the digital tools that you can use for your um, audio editing are things like Audacity for your laptop and your PC or GarageBand. 
Um, so Audacity is a free open source software uh, and there's loads of videos on YouTube on how to use this. So you can literally learn everything you needed to know about um, editing audio. Uh, depending on your, your podcast, you probably just need to do some basic things of, you know, a, this take that we did wasn't great, so we need to cut that out. So it will just be some basic edits that you might need to do. Uh, if you listen to a lot of podcasts when they first start out, you can hear that the quality of the audio isn't the best. And that's because they're starting out. Uh, they've not quite got the money behind them to have a, a nice team editing for them. So don't worry about it not being perfect when you first start doing this. But you can um, clip your, your audio using some of these tools. Um, if you are using your smartphone or a smart tablet, you can do direct podcasting. Uh, and that literally means using one app to record your audio, edit your audio, and then publish your audio using a, a proper uh, official um, podcasting format. So for example, there, there's two here, um, Spreaker Studio and Anchor. Anchor is one I've used in the past um, because it has both the app, the phone app and the web application version, and it publishes using Acast. So if you've ever used uh, or listened to even, sorry, uh, a podcast, you might hear an advert for Acast Podcasts. Anchor uses that, that software um, to publish their podcasts. You can use that. So that would just mean recording straight on your phone, editing, publishing, done, all in one. You don't need to publish using this. You can just actually record and then edit, and then you can export the file and, and publish it somewhere else. And also for your phone, for some audio editing, we have GarageBand again. This is just for your Apple iOS devices and Wave Editor, which is just available on Android. And these are both free and you can do um, basic editing in the uh, for audio there. But again, you don't actually have to use any of these tools. You can use tools that you already know. So for example, we're in Zoom. We could actually just have uh, audio calls in Zoom. We could use Blackboard Collaborate. Microsoft Stream, YouTube, SoundCloud, Microsoft Teams, all these different tools can be used to record um, our audio and we could then publish uh, whether it's internally on a site or using something like SoundCloud or YouTube to have them hosted. It's up to you and however you wish to, to kind of do this to have your podcast out there. So you can just use tools that you already know um, and it's easier as well. It makes you more comfortable to use the tools that you already know how to use. Um, so some top tips, uh, and these are these are quite good, especially when you're starting out. Um, practice makes perfect. You know, give it try all your equipment first before you actually go in and record, uh, and make sure you know how to use the software or that the software works on your device before kind of getting to that point. But definitely check that your phone works, your laptop's working, your microphone's plugged in, your headphones are working all that kind of stuff before you actually start the, the real tape. There's nothing worse than having someone sit there and think you've recorded and you find out that it's not recorded. Um, so definitely practice makes perfect. Um, keep original copies of your audio. Um, so this is if you are editing anything, you want to make sure that you've got the original somewhere safe. And that's just in case anything goes wrong. Uh, you might accidentally delete something, your, your laptop or computer may crash. You want to make sure that you've got that original audio somewhere because um, if the software you know, breaks or, or anything, you, if you've got that original somewhere else, you can always go back and, and, and kind of start where you uh, start from the beginning. Um, while you're recording, you might want to take some notes. So uh, I like to have a little bit of paper with me when I'm listening and producing. And I, I kind of do cut, keep, fix. And this is usually, uh, I just write C, K, F usually uh, at different times. And this just means that as I'm listening to the people who are speaking, uh, the, the hosts, if a door bangs, I will take a note at the time and I will put a nice C at that time. So I know that I'm gonna cut out the door banging. Um, if there's a really poignant moment, it's a very kind of deep and interesting point, I'm going to write keep at that time. So I know right, this is definitely something I want to keep into the final edit. And again, you know, maybe there's a, a low hum of a truck going past, but what they were saying was really good. Rather than having them 
I could say to them, could you actually repeat that? But it might not be as good the second time. I'll go in and fix that. I'll try and remove the sound of that in the background if I can. Um, lastly, well, not lastly, but um, penultimately, listen after editing. Um, so one of the things that is my bugbear in, and I've heard it on some podcasts, is you'll hear they repeat themselves. And it's just because uh, in the edit, they've fixed something, deleted something, duplicated something. Easy done, um, anyone does it. And it is just one of my pet peeves though. So once you've finished your edit, listen from start to finish, check that it's okay before you publish it. Because you'll never know, you might have missed something or you might have put the wrong bit of audio in the wrong place. And lastly, don't expect 100%. Um, you're never gonna have a perfect, that was amazing podcast. Uh, you could sit and edit for hours and hours and hours to get that, but at the end of the day, podcasts are about the person it's very personable it feels like a human interaction so we're not expecting 100 percent with that so don't worry um and people we, we make mistakes and we understand that and it can be quite funny and we can play it off in a good way with podcasts so with podcasts get creative with them um so some of the things that you can do to get creative with these is have student generated content um, get your students to create podcasts instead of having presentations. Uh, use it for assessment. Maybe if they have to do a, a video assessment, have a podcast option as well. Or even um, class materials and homework. Uh, you can create your own class materials or have your homework is listen to the podcast. You'll come in tomorrow and you'll answer some questions based on that podcast as well. Uh, and kind of lastly, there is podcast for everything. So for you as a lecturer, we've got a, a couple that I found here, um, the Cult of Pedagogy. We've got the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast, House of Ed Tech, which is quite an interesting one. I do like that one. Uh, the Creative Classroom and the Teacher Toolkit Podcast. But there's loads of podcasts out there. And um, you could actually just search your topic and you'll probably find a good number of podcasts available for your topic. And for students, and again, I've just picked a couple um, from different topics here. We've got the ESL pod, Hardcore History, TED Talks Daily, and Brain Science. So you could actually go and find a, a podcast relating to the topic that you teach and actually set that as um, a resource for your students. Say like, listen guys, this would really help you. Go and listen to this podcast and it will be able to provide a lot of extra learning, revision for you, or even homework as well. And I think the podcast can be used in a really creative way. Even if you're not creating your own, you can see the benefits of letting the students uh, and providing students the, the kind of the go ahead to go and listen to some for their, their own topic there. Okay, so that is everything I wish to cover. Wonderful, Amy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I think well, I've got a whole bunch of questions, and I'll use a uh, most prerogative to ask a few. And um, first of all, that's uh, I, I think I've, I, I, I'll, I'll take nothing else, but I will take inspiration. I'll also take out of this uh, knowledge of the terms gabfest and chumcast that I hadn't come across before. They're wonderful, um, and also the fact that I hadn't thought about downloading podcasts to my watch, which I can do as well. Um, I think uh, one of the uh, do we know about typically how your audience accesses podcasts? I can see one uh, way of doing it where people clear the space, and it's one I like to do, close my eyes, uh, sit off to the side comfortably and listen to something. And that is so, and an hour long one certainly is great for that. And then there's other times when I'm on the move, in public transport or in the car, and actually the shorter ones then allow me to uh, uh, dip in and dip out as I go. Um, do you have a typical audience or is it about making sure that it's accessible to anyone? It's about it's making making sure it's as accessible to anyone. Um, so with, with the course, we kind of go out and say like, there are gonna be so many different ways that people listen. Um, and it's the same as when people learn, uh, we, we always kind of learn the um, VARC, visual, um, audio, you know, that kind of uh, kinesthetic and that kind of stuff. And this is part of that and that is one of the way that people love to, to learn is just by listening. Um, you know, if I take the podcasts that I listen to, a lot of them are educational ones. Um, and, and I, you know, I didn't even realize that I listened to so many educational ones. You know, they'll talk about films and they'll go really in depth and they'll talk about, you know, um, art and that kind of stuff. Um, 
so we just want to make sure that when people are considering podcasts, uh, and especially because we've had a couple of lecturers do the podcasting course now that I teach, um, how do they want to get them out there to the students, how do they want to promote them. And so they're looking at, you know, creating playlists on YouTube and stuff because they want them to be to be open um, or whether or not if it's not appropriate. So looking at something like uh, we have a tool medial. So if they want it to be, you know, so for our well-being one, because it is a very open topic, they want that to be open to not only just staff and students, but other people who might think about joining the college. Um, so that will be on YouTube. But for some of our lecturers, maybe medial is the way to go. It's a bit more um, topic heavy and you know lecture notes heavy. They don't want it to be out there. But we would like it to be as accessible as possible. So if it can be streamed, that's great. Um, if it could be downloaded offline for students, that would also be great. But it just depends on what the lecturer is comfortable using, I would say. But if if they could be as as accessible as possible and in that it's offline, online, available on any device. That would be the, the ideal, yeah. Thank you, and we'll finish off, given the limitations of the visual, we'll be uh, uh, stopping the recording soon, but Ian has asked, what is your favorite podcast? Oh, it changes uh, a lot, because um, I, I will listen to a full series. Uh, a recent one is um, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast I've been listening to. And I've actually never played Dungeons and Dragons before, but I'm really keen to do it now. And it says it's really quite interesting. Um, and they've kept the, the episodes short for Dungeons and Dragons because some of the podcasts are about three to four hours long. Um, but this one's a, a one hour long. It's called Dungeons and Daddies. And um, sounds a bit funny, but uh, they pretend to be dads who've lost their children and they have to go into this realm to get them back. Um, so the, the role play is just really funny, very interesting, um, and uh, that's one of my favourite ones at the moment. I do listen to um, No Such Thing as a Fish is another one that I always go back to, and that's a uh, QI fact-based one there, which uh, which I like. Yeah, But oh, I could talk for days about podcasts. I listen to, there's probably about 30 on my list that I nip in and out of. Well, I take it, uh, I'm sure you'll have inspired others in, in, to take up podcasting, uh, both uh, consumption and production, and with some very good yes. tips there as to do it. Amy, thank you very much for this session. Thank you.